Hello, ladies and gents. How are you doing? Right, we're starting a new chapter. Oops. I can see. Okay. Just making sure it's recording. It's actually, yeah, it is recording. Okay. So we're starting a new chapter, measurement. It's a short chapter, and it's it's actually one of the one, I think it's one you usually do quite well. Um, right, measurement. We're measuring the surface area, okay, and the volume of different objects, okay? And what we're going to start, what we're going to do in this lesson, we're just going to recap what we know from grade 9. But before we get into the different shapes, we're going to look at cuboid, cube, triangular prism, and cylinder. Let's just remind ourselves what is surface area and volume mean. So looking, let's say, at this shape, this is what we call uh, a cuboid, uh, or cubid, which is, um, is it a cubid or cuboid? It is a cuboid, it should be a cuboid, cuboid, okay? Uh, we also call it a rectangular prism, okay? So anyway, this is a rectangular prism. When I talk about the surface area, what I really mean is the area on the outside of this shape. So if you were to wrap it as a present for somebody, it's how much paper do you need to use around it? That's your surface area, okay? Volume is what's the inside, okay? So if this was, well, let's say, let's pick this, okay? All right, this is another shape, okay? Well, it's a quite complicated shape. We're not gonna calculate the surface area of this. Maybe it's a little bit like a cylinder, but it's not exactly. The volume is the amount of water that it will, it, that container can hold. So that's volume and surface area, okay? So we're going to start with a rectangular prism. And in fact, what I've done deliberately, I didn't draw it yet because I want you to be able to see me drawing these shapes because I really believe that um, it's actually to do with all kinds of math. But by drawing a problem, by you drawing it, even if somebody drew it for you, you drawing it during the test, during whatever, it does help you to understand. So it's important, really important to know how to draw these shapes. And I'll tell you, if I can draw it, you can draw it because I'm quite rubbish. And it doesn't always work the first time, but uh, it does work. So how do you draw a rectangular prism, okay? I draw that little, like, what do you call, parallelogram. And then I'm just going to draw these straight lines, vertical lines going down. And then another, uh, the base. Okay, so we've got two bases. All these shapes, by the way, you can call them prisms, not prison, prisms, okay, which means they have two bases, the bottom base and the top base, okay, so two prisms, right, so now let's just say, uh, let's call this side A, this side B, and this side C, okay, I'm not going to use numbers, okay, maybe we'll do an example later, maybe, maybe not, because it's pretty clear, but what we're doing here, we find formulas for the surface area and the volume. So if this side is A, this side is B, this side is C, now we can calculate the surface area. What is the surface area? Well, it's the area of this side, okay? You can see the area of this front base, front side, okay? What's the area of that front side? How do you calculate area of a, a, it's a rectangle, okay? It's A times C, A times C, okay? And it's the area, let's use another color. Okay, let's, uh, the area of this little rectangle, okay, which is on the right. Okay, what's the area of this rectangle? Okay, maybe I'll, now, before that, okay. That's going to be B times C, okay. And then we've got one more side, it's a good question. One more side, which is the top base, okay. And the area of that top base, well, we have to think about it. If this is A, this is also A. This length is A, this length is A. This length is B, this length is B, right? This is C. So C doesn't play a part here. So it's going to be plus A times B. So is this a surface area? Almost. Because what I'm sure some of you already realize that this blue side, there's actually another one like that, just on the other side. Okay, so how many sides does a rectangular prism have? Okay, well, we have one and two, three and four, five and six. Okay, and, and top base and the bottom base, okay, opposite bases have the same area, they're identical. So we really need to have two of those plus two of those plus two of those 
So what I can do is put brackets here and times it by two. Okay? Or I can write two times AC plus two times BC plus two times AD. Okay? Right? So that's the surface area of uh, a rectangle. Okay, I'll write it down as well, because that's what they write in the book. Okay? Two times AC plus two times BC plus two times AD. Okay? By the way, all there's a ta table here. All the stuff that I'm talking now is in page 244. So you can see a whole page there. Now, it's really worthwhile after the lesson. Spend five minutes going through that table. It's even worthwhile copying it to your, to your book, I'll be honest with you. Write that and copy in your book. Again, it's more chance that we'll go into the hit. And stay there. Okay, let's move on to volume. How do we find a volume of a, 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 a rectangular prism? I think you do it even in prep school, okay? It's simply the, the, the width times the length times the height, okay? So it's going to be A, B, C, A times B times C, okay? So far, so good. Right, next, a cube. What is a cube? A cube, I've got a cube somewhere here. I have a cube, I don't have it anymore. <laughs> Somebody took it. Okay, you know these cubes, the Hungarian cubes that I've got here with all these different colors that you try to move around and, and you get the same color, right? What is a cube is just like this is a rectangle, rectangular prism, then a cube is a square prism, okay? So it's basically a prism, it's the same rectangular prism, but the A, B, and C are all the same. So I'm going to make, like, it's not, well, it's not a parallelogram, it's a, oh, I forgot the name. A, a, a diamond. Yeah, look, no, I can't remember what you call it now. Never, leave, leave, never mind, leave it alone. Okay, so this is a cube. Okay, so in this case, the sides A, A, and A are all the same. Every, all sides are A. So to find out the surface and the volume, it's exactly the same. It's just that A, B, and C are the same. So what will be the area? Okay, let's color in one side. Okay. The area of this side is going to be a squared, because a times a. But now, how many sides? I mean, all these sides are the same. They're all the same. It's a square. Uh, it's a cube. Okay. Perfect uh, equal sides. Okay. So we, how many sides have we got for a dice? A dice is another example of cube. We've got six sides, so it's six a squared. So if I know a, obviously these are just formulas. If I know a is two, then it's going to be six times two squared. Two squared is four. Six times four. 24. Okay? Let's move on to the volume. Okay? Again, here it was A, B, C, but now B and C are all A, so it's going to be A cubed. So that's easy. Okay? I'm sure this was quite easy for you. Now, the next one, which is a bit more difficult to draw and to calculate, is the triangular prism. Okay? Um, do I have something that is a triangular prism? I don't. Okay? But a triangular prism could be, for example, Toblerone. I don't know if you eat that Swiss chocolate. Okay? It's basically, well, let's draw it. Okay? So I'm going to draw one base. Okay? So here the bases, the side, were, uh, uh, and let's say the top and the bottom base, were a rectangle or square. Here the bases are going to be triangles. And I'm going to draw another triangle here. Okay, it's not going to be the best one. Okay, and that's a triangular prism. So it's good to draw the bases first, and then you connect the lines. They are all kind of parallel. I drew that as a dotted line because obviously it's, it's beyond. You can't even see it really. So you don't even have to draw it. And I think it's nicer when you draw it. Okay, but you know, it's just on the other side. Fortunately, I don't really have one here. Maybe when you come back to school, we'll try and find one. Okay. Right, let's say, uh, let's use these letters. I'm going to use the same letters as they used in the book, so not to confuse you. Now, you know what, actually, I'm going to redraw it, because here the triangle looks like they are equilateral. And, and they can be, but they don't have to be. So I'm going to redraw that with triangles that are obviously not tri equilateral. They can be very, very different. But what is important is that these triangles are congruent. No, we haven't learned that. Yeah, you have learned that last year, so you know what congruent means. Okay, I hope you do. Okay, it means that they are identical. Okay, something like that. That shouldn't have been dotted. Okay, maybe it's not as clear as the other one, but we'll just go with that. Okay, so let's put some letters. And again, I want to use exactly the same letters. So that's going to be B. That is C. 
that will be A, okay? All right, that's what they use. And then I'll call that B. And there's one more line, I'll give him a little different color, which is a bit different, and that's H. Wish I drew it a bit bigger, but hopefully you can see it, okay? Right, so this side is A, this side is B, this side is C. The, high, or the distance between the two bases, right? That's one base, the back base, the front base. The distance between them is D, okay? And H is the height of this triangle. Okay, okay, okay. Let's do it. Right. Do you know what? I'm just going to pause and draw it a little bit bigger so you can see a bit better. Okay. So here we go. A little bit bigger, hopefully a bit clearer. Okay. A, B, C, D, and H. Now, to find the surface area, I need to, how many sides do I actually have here? I've got the two triangles, the front and back, you can call them the bases. Then I've got the bottom, this little rectangle. Then I've got that little rectangle and the one on the other side, okay? So that is going to be a little bit difficult for you to see it, uh, but I can also draw it maybe front on here. Okay, so if I look from the front, if I'm looking from this side, I can see just this triangle. So how many sides are going to be? There's going to be the side of this triangle, the area of there. There will be the area of the triangle in the back, that one. And then there's going to be a side here, side here, side here. So one, two, three, four, five. There's five sides for a triangular prism. It's still called a prism because it has two parallel, two parallel bases. We'll call those two bases. And they're parallel to each other. You'll see our next two lessons time, we're going to look at things like pyramids, which only have one base. Okay? Right, so to find the surface area, let's start with finding the area of these triangles. They're actually the hardest one, but it's, it's not too difficult. What's the area of a triangle? Base times height divided by two. So the base, okay, you gotta, I'm still using the word base for two different things. For the whole shape, for the triangular prism, the base is a triangle. But now if I'm looking at the triangle, the base of that triangle is B, okay? So the area of the triangle is going to be B times the height, okay? Remember we learned height, to find the height is from the vertex to the base, the line hits it in 90 degrees. So it's B times H, and if you remember, we got to divide it by 2, okay? That's how we find the area of the triangle. Now, the thing is, that's the area of one triangle. But the thing is, I've got two triangles. Two triangles. So I need to time that by two. Okay, so you can see there's two, two will cancel out in a second. Okay, now we're going to add to that because uh, that's just the two sides. Then I've got the other three sides. Okay, I've got one side here, one side there, one side there. I've got this side, I've got the bottom side, and I've got the one on this side. So let's start with this side. Okay, I don't want to draw on it because it's just going to make it complicated, but it's this one. Okay, so what will be the area? It will be A times B, A times B, okay? Now let's do the bottom side, it's this one, okay? Maybe I will draw it a little bit. <laughs> so that was this side, okay? Okay, A times B. Now let's erase that, okay? It's going to be a little bit messy, but I think you'll be able to see it every time a bit better, okay? Now let's draw, draw the bottom side. The bottom side, is like that. Can you see that one? Okay, so let me just hang up to this phone. Somebody's calling me. Okay, still video is still on. Okay, so the area at the bottom is BD. Okay, so we'll call it BD. And then the last one, it's this side. Okay, now here unfortunately I already erased. What is this side? Well, it's going to be C times this length. What is this length? Well, this length, that dotted line, is the same as this line. Okay, so it's CD plus CD. Use black. Plus BD. Okay, so I'm going to rewrite the surface area. It's going to be those two cancel out. So it'll be BH plus AD plus BD plus CD. I'm just going to pause here uh, and, and come back in a minute. Okay, let's march on and go on to the volume. Okay, that's quite an important one. Okay, the volume of a sphere, 
and, and a, so, not a sphere of a triangular prism. The volume of a triangular prism, and in fact, the volume of any prism, what we're going to do is always take the surface area of the base. Okay, let me just pause and clear out a little bit. Okay, so the volume of a triangular prism, okay, and that's the volume of any kind of prism. You're going to take one of the bases, okay, define the surface area of that, and you time it by the distance between the prisms. So let me just put the letters again. It was A, B, C, we had H, and we had D. So the volume will be the surface area of the triangle, which we know, what is the surface of the area of the triangle? is BH over 2. Okay? I don't time it by 2 because I want to find the surface area of one base. Okay? It's BH over 2. And then we time that by the distance between the two bases, between the two triangles. So it's D. So the answer, the answer is BHD over 2. I just want to make sure I'm using the same letter as them. And that is absolutely right. Okay? Now, I hope you guys can see the bottom. You can. I ran out, almost ran out of space, but I think it's a good idea that I have it all on one page. So I'm keen to squeeze the cylinder here. What is a cylinder? I call a cylinder circular prism. Okay? I don't know if you can, but it makes sense to me because then how do you draw it? You draw one circle here, you draw one circle there, and then you just connect them like this. Okay? It's like a toilet roll. Okay, toilet roll. Okay, and again, why is it called? A, why would I call it a prism? Because it has two bases that are parallel to each other and they're identical. That's I think why the definition of a prism. Okay, you can see you've got two bases here that are parallel and equal. Two bases there equal. Two bases here that equal. Two bases here. It's just the shape of the base makes it a different kind of prism. That's a rectangular prism. That's a cube. That's a triangle prism, and that's what I call a circular prism. I don't know if you can really call it, but I call it. Okay, finding surface area. Let's start with the volume. Volume actually is easy, okay? So what do I need to tell you here? Well, I need to tell you, first of all, the height. I just want to make sure I'm using the same letters as them, right? So the height is, is the distance between the two circles. And then the other thing, I only need one more thing to tell you, and that's the radius, the radius of the circle. So... Just as we learn to calculate the volume of this triangular prism by multiplying the area of the triangle by the distance between the two bases, the same thing here. We're going to find the area of the circle, which you know is pi r squared, and you're going to time it by the distance between the two circles, which is h. So the volume is pi r squared h. Okay? Let me, let me just make these little lines here so you know which one belongs to which, because we were running out of space for a little cylinder. So that was pretty easy. Now the surface area, like in the triangular phrase, uh, triangular phrase is also a little bit more difficult, but not too difficult. So we want to find out the, the area of this prism. Here is where you have to be a little bit careful, in fact in every place, in all of them, because you got to find out what are they actually asking you. Okay? Um, Okay, let me explain first, and then I'll, I'll, I'll talk about the difficulties. So if I want the volume of the whole cylinder, all of it, okay? Let's, here we go. We've got a cylinder here. I've got a cylinder, okay? So if I want the surface area of this whole thing around, and the top, and the bottom, okay? So let's find out. What's the surface area of the top? Well, the area is pi r squared, but I've got two circles now. So it's going to be 2 pi r squared. That's... The top and the bottom. Okay. Now uh, I need I need the round bit. I need the round bit. So let me just give you the formula. Okay. The round bit is basically two pi r h. Okay. Let me try and maybe explain very very briefly. Okay. I will do it here. Let me move you along here because I ran out of space on this side. I'll make sure you can see. Okay. So if I take, if I try and take that, and I find, my aim is to find the surface area of this thing, the surrounding. So what I can do, I can take the cylinder, this was the cylinder, and I open it. So if I open it, if I cut, if I cut around here, zig, 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 and then open it, what will I get? I will get a rectangle, isn't it? If I close it again, I will get this, this, the cylinder. Okay. 
what's the height of this, or what is the width, or whatever you call it, this length? It's going to be h, the same as that, it's the same thing. What is this length going to be? Well, this length is going to be the circumference of the circle. And you know what circumference of the circle is? 2 pi r. So what will be the area? It will be 2 pi r h. That will be the area of this little thing. Okay? So that, hey, <laughs> we're going back here. Make sure you guys can see. It's a long video. Sorry, guys. Okay? That's why we're adding this 2 pi r h. Okay? Now, to finish up, two minutes, not even. I'm going to get you to do this exercise. I'm going to ask you to look at the examples. They're not that easy. I'm going to see if maybe you can just do it by yourself. But if it's a problem, let me know, and I'll make another little video solving some of these examples. But basically, everything you need is here. But the questions can be a little bit difficult. So, for example, they might ask you to find uh, the surface area of, uh, of not that, but of a cup. Let's get this. Okay. Now, this is also a cylinder, and they might ask you to find the surface area here. But now, look, it's open on the top. So, I don't have anything here. If, let's say, they want to find out, I want to wrap this glass, or I want to just find out how much glass I want to use. So, in this case, I'm not going to have two bases. This is open. So, I'm not going to have 2 pi r square. I'm just going to have pi r square plus 2 pi r h. Okay. Another case could be uh, a, a, a telescope or, I don't know, a, a, a toilet roll. Okay, a toilet roll is basically just, just the wrap around here, and there are no bases. So in that case, the surface area is not going to be 2 pi r squared, it will be just 2 pi r h. Okay, the same thing, for example, with this kind of rectangular base. So a rectangular base here, well, it's missing the top base. So you, you don't just write down 2AC plus 2BC plus 2AB. One of those is just going to be, let's say, AB will be just AB, not 2AB, because the, the outside bit, the top bit is open. Okay? Uh, another question which I see they have in the example, I don't know if you guys can see, I've got some water here. They might ask to find out the volume of the water. Well, the volume of the water will be the whole volume if the water is all the way to the top. If the water is, as you, I don't know if you can see it here, but it's not even halfway, then you don't need to calculate the volume of the whole uh, cubit, just the volume of the water, okay? So we can make the questions a little bit more difficult. So what I'll do is I'll let you go through that exercise. If there is some issues and some problem, please message me, and I'll send another uh, video with, with uh, how to solve these problems. Right, so spoke already too much. Enjoy the exercise.